everyone, this is Colin here. Uh, today what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk through um, our broadcast um, template um, in Logic Pro. That is the digital uh, recording uh, workstation that we use to capture everything and to send um, things out to broadcast. And so I'm going to cover a lot of things um, <clears throat> with Logic today. I'm um, also going to cover some things with what is called Dante. Um, that is the network we use um, in order to uh, get signal from the soundboard, from the instruments and in the auditorium, back here into the office, and then it goes back out to a broadcast that's also set up in the auditorium. And so um, if you want to look at a diagram of that, there will be another video um, along with the diagram videos that um, where I'll be drawing on the iPad. And so what I'll do is, in that video, as you watch it, what you'll see is you'll see from point A to point B, you know, all the way to point Z on like the flow of our broadcast system, um, at least for now. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so today, what I'm going to mainly focus on, um, or entirely focus on, is everything that's going on on the computer. If you're someone working broadcast and you're you're doing the sound mixing for that. Um, this is the video you really want to pay close attention to. And so where I'm going to start is, um, if you're not familiar with, um, with a, a Apple computer or Mac, um, you have all these uh, little widgets down here, these icons, and um, each one of them do something you know different, open up an app, close an app, whatever it may be. Um, and uh, where you would go to look at Dante things, um, since it's not on the main screen is you would go to Launchpad and the second screen right here. And so what we'll do is we'll start with Dante Virtual Sound Card. And so what you want to see here is going to be exactly this. And so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to screenshot this so it can always be here. And this is what it should look like. Um, so that'll be on the computer right there. Um, I'll actually put that in along with the broadcast template folder. Um, and this is something we're using this coming Sunday. Um, so you want 32 channels coming in and 32 channels coming out. Uh, four milliseconds is how much latency there is, and that is the lowest it'll go, and it's pretty darn good. You almost can't even notice it. I've sat in this room with a microphone before, and I've talked into it, and it's it's almost you know not even there. Um, EN9 is the type of network that we're using, and then you want the IP address, which is the whole IP address for the network. Um, going across everywhere um, so it should look like that and um, you can stop this but once it's started it just keeps going and so we don't want to mess with that um, licensee you shouldn't have to worry about it's always going you don't have to worry about any of this stuff um, this will just tell you if it's up to date and that is pretty much it for that so that would be a good place to start at point uh, or ground zero if something was going on, any issues that you wanted to troubleshoot with the Dante network, that would be somewhat good place to start. So this is Dante controller. And um, what this is, is everything on our network. And right now, what you see is AVIO A02 512D53, Life's iMac Mini, which is the iMac we're on right now, uh, RedNet AM2. And then if the soundboard was on, it would say something like X Dante, or it may even just say like X32 or something like that. And um, that is what is um, sending and uh, sending all the signals our way. And so if it was turned on, it would show up here and it would have um, something similar to this. It would have all of these green checks and these are cross points. They go all the way across right here and they would go down. And because that's not plugged in right now, that is why we have this little um, uh oh symbol um, but what you would do is to get rid of that is you would just once it's plugged in you would just go through and you would start clicking it um, If it was you know plugged up on um, this AVIO AO2 is what is running to our other network um, Our Netgear Pro Safe gigabit switch in the auditorium um, And a lot of the stuff I'm talking about right now. You're like I have no idea what he's talking about. That's okay There's you know like Chandler and I believe Steven and a couple other people um, are really knowledgeable and things like that and know exactly what I'm talking about. And plus when I talk about 
the diagram of our system, it'll make a lot of sense. You'll know exactly what I'm talking about because I'll draw it, I'll write out what it is. Um, but anyways, there is a network switch in the auditorium and out of the network switch uh, runs this, this AVIO AO2 um, uh, little adapter that goes from digital audio into analog audio and then that plugs into the white sling router for our broadcast. Um, there's a whole lot of other things going on here, but honestly, that's not something you should have to worry about. Um, the problem with this is this is such a complicated thing that if, if we were to ever set this network up differently, that was when, that would be when we would need to worry about it, not just for troubleshooting typically. Um, but again, if you turn this on or turn the soundboard on, you'd have one more thing. It would have 32 channels that would go down and you would want to make sure that, you know, one to one is clicked and then so on and it would just go down. Um, that's really it for Dante. It's complicated yet simple at the same time and it really accomplishes a lot. I love it. Um, so then the next thing we have it would be our broadcast template. And so anything that looks like, hopefully you can see my mouse, but I'm, I'm circling the LBCC broadcast. I believe you can see my mouse. Um, you know, these would typically be named LBCC broadcast and the date, and then they'll all come off of, I'm going to rename it to actually say template. Um, they'll all go off of this template right here. Um, and so I'll kind of explain how to set up a date um, and kind of the process I go through. Um, and, uh, you know, while I'm thinking about it, I'm going to go back and screenshot the the receivers and stuff right here so that makes sense as well and what that should look like in addition to also having the other um thing the x32 anyways um i'll, I'll go through this so um what you do is if you're starting from scratch from the broad the template you would click on double click it it's gonna open up it's gonna take a minute <laughs> but it'll open up logic pro and then it's going to automatically have all of the channels open. And so before we do anything, I want us to go to preferences, then to audio. And then um, you want to be on audio right here. And then you're going to look at your output and your input device. You want them to both be Dante virtual sound card. Uh, you want the buffer size to be as high as it can go, 1024. Uh, we can do small buffer. Um, and I think, yep. That is it for everything. Oh, actually, we can uh, we can do high precision. Uh, then we hit apply, and then we just want it to stay like that. Um, so what's going to happen from there is um, you want to make sure all your channels are good. So this should be one. These inputs right here should be one through thirty-two. And so let's say something was wrong. You would click on input, and then you would find the input it's supposed to be. Like let's say for some reason input five six is really seven or whatever, um, you would change that. Um, the next thing to do is we can look through what these channels are, and so this is um, the the pamphlet that you have, the tech guide, and what's on the soundboard itself is exactly this. So channel one on the soundboard and on this, and again this is in the the tech guide. Um, is the the handheld mic that um, Jake uses. Then there's the earpiece, and there's left stage mic, left center, right center, right stage. The media, um, which is like the computer, room mic, acoustic one. Then we have an open channel that we can use for whatever we want. Electric one, electric two, bass, piano, open, open, kick, snare, and so on. So we have a lot of open channels now that we can use for whatever we ever you know, decide to plug in there. Um, so to get started, um, what you're going to see, first of all, is that each of these channel or not every single channel, but especially like the vocals have these, um, input effects on them. They have uh, different plugins that are being used. All of them have an EQ, all of them have a compressor, but then only the vocals have reverb, um, other than the drums, which are over here. Um, so what you can look at is if you click on EQ, 
it'll pop this up and what you'll see automatically right here is it says Jake's mic and so what I've done is, is I've made three presets right here so we have female vocal Jake's mic male vocal and in this template they're saved to each one so if you go through there's um, the same two EQs here also the same compressor um, then we have a female vocal and this is just something to get you started on the typical female vocal you know female vocals are a little bit harsher in the 2k range um, and we always want to have this cut to, to knock out the low end rumble so the voices aren't muddy um, but that's just put on every single one and then like on my mic typically I put my actual um, EQ that needs to be right there um, for males there's usually a little bit of rumble in the low end and the 500 um, frequency um, and so I went ahead and just put a notch there and it's about the same thing um, so this is just a good starting point for a male vocalist and then we have a compressor for uh, the vocals you don't really need to mess with that once it's set you know and, unless someone comes back and you know they've really had a lot of training and know what they're doing then we can change some stuff but other than that typically with that one setting is pretty good and then we have a reverb um, and on the sheets that are printed off each Sunday, you know, they'll typically say reverb on, reverb off. All you have to do is just click that on and off. Um, and then, you know, we keep going on to other things. The acoustic typically has a um, EQ. This is kind of a weird EQ because I already have an EQ on my acoustic coming through. So that's why this is kind of a, an interesting EQ. But usually we just leave that on. Then we have an EQ for the piano. Um, which is a little different, um, but it usually makes it sound pretty good. And then we have our drums. They ha each have their own EQs. Um, and, you know, once those are set, they should pretty much stay the same. Um, drums also all have a, a separate um, type of compressor going on. Um, you can, you know, you can actually pick presets and whatnot. Um, and those all sound pretty decent. Uh, the snare has some reverb going on just something a little bit um, it just makes it sound kind of fuller and it's, it's just a nice sound um, and then all these channels typically don't have anything going on and then we get to our out and right now it has an EQ on it which is kind of like a mastering EQ I know that doesn't mean a whole lot to most of you but that's just typically um, a finishing touch kind of EQ and this is just a generic one that I've slapped on here um, and there's a lot of things you can do to this last um, output um, but right now we're just using uh, channel EQ and then a compressor and this kind of tightens everything up kind of makes everything kind of glued together a little bit um, whoops had an alarm go off um, so that's that for like the inputs and the effects um, the next thing you need to know is that this little eye right here it's uh, input monitoring monitoring what that does is make sure that the channel is being heard and the effects are coming through. So if you have that turned off, um, nothing's going to happen there. Um, it's not going to work the way you want it to. Whoops, sorry. Um, and it's just like it's going to completely cut the, cha the channel out just entirely. So you don't want to do that. Um, but what you do want to do uh, is make sure that this R... Um, so you want to make sure this is not white. You want to make sure it's orange. And if you click on the channel, it'll like bolden it. You know, each one you click on. But you just want to make sure that it's on. Um, the next thing you can do, um, well, I'll wait. But the next thing I was going to talk about is how to arm a track um, to also have it come through. Because that way that's all channels coming through. Not just one channel coming through. It'd be all channels coming through. They all have to have the red flashing blinky. Uh, thing going on um, but I'll wait and show you that in a minute um, when we get to that point of setting up like an actual Sunday but this is pretty much it uh, there's a lot of more complicated things that I typically would like to do um, but the like running what's called like buses and whatnot um, we don't use any bus channels right now eventually I think we'll get to that point where we'll use buses um, but that's just that's way down the road um, so now let's move on to how you would make, um, a Sunday morning, um, 
file or if you will so the first thing I'll do is um, is I will go up here to track and I will click show hidden tracks and so what's going to show is this green H right here and then an H is going to pop up here so let's say I know um, Jake is using the handheld he's not using the earpiece so I'm gonna go ahead and hit hide or hit the H and then I'm gonna hit M to mute it and let's say I know all four vocalists are gonna be here I know they're we're gonna use media there's gonna be a room mic there's gonna be acoustic um, we're not using that open channel so I'm gonna go ahead and mute it and then hit H um, there's only one electric guitar so I'm gonna mute and hide um, there's bass there's piano no open channel all right, there's drums, no open channels. So I'm hiding and muting everything. And the reason we mute, even though it's hidden, is because if there was a hot channel, you know, like a microphone that's still hanging out somewhere, it'll still come through even though it's hidden. You never want to have click showing. You always want to have it muted because that's just for us. It just, it just happens to come through. And then we have a bunch of open channels. And so we'll go ahead and we'll mute all these. And... So now what you're going to notice is when I hit H, boom. Now I only see the tracks that I don't have hidden. And so if I want those back, I hit that green and it'll show everything again. So I'll hit it one more time. So now it's like, okay, this is my whole band. So then I'm like, okay, I want to go through and name them. So I got, you know, Kim on the far left mic. Um, and you just double click that. I don't know if you saw me. You just double click it. Um, type in Kim. Oop. And then you can hit tab to go to the next one. Let's say it's uh, Caleb. And then let's say Colin. And then Gene, right? And there you go. That's it for that. Um, and then typically, I'll name this first one Jake. Not always. just depends. Um, that's pretty much it for that. That's how you would go through and name them. Um, and then the next thing you would do to ensure that you're getting that audio, and this is what I was going to tell you a second ago, is to arm the track. And so what you can do is, is you can click on this first uh, channel strip. You can click shift uh, on the keyboard, and then you can come all the way down to this very last track, and then you can click it. So now you've selected everything. So then, boom, you can hit R. They're all selected. Um that's typically all that kind of goes on and then you know if you were the one doing this you would go in you'd hit save as is something separate and you know it typically name it lbcc broadcast you know 725 whatever um sometimes that we've had this up to six but because we've changed a couple things this is on a new computer um, we might not need it that loud anymore. Um, we'll know after this Sunday, um, after our rehearsal. Um, but usually we can turn this up to six and then leave this one where it's at to ensure that we're getting good volume. Um, that's pretty much it other than that. Um, you know, a good thing is like our drums, once you get drums set, they should pretty much stay the same. Um, a good thing to do is, and this is something you can also do is you can select all the tr drum tracks and you can hit solo let's say Jake's playing drums and you're like okay I want I want to I want to figure this out I want to turn the kick down a little bit you got to click away from it to deselect them all I want to turn this up down whatever and you get your mix and you're like okay I like that that sounds good and then you know we're in the midst of a song and you're like you know what the drums sound really good as they are but they're a little loud well, you can go and you can select all of them, and then you can just turn them down all at once. Um, you can do the same thing with um, the vocalist, the band. Let's say you're like, okay, the band as a whole is a little too loud. I'm just kind of pulling down just a little bit. You don't want to turn the overall mix down because then that chokes out. We talked about that um, in the book. Is you know we choke. It's like we have a, a, a garden hose or a fire hose, and we're like choking it out. Um, we want to make sure we're getting as much potential flow as we can so it'd be better to turn down at the source instead of right here or wherever else um i think that's pretty much it um there's a whole lot of things i mean there's so many different things we can do here um but uh that is just the gist of it and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to click out of this 
not don't ever save over the broadcast template i'm gonna make a second one <laughs> just in case um but you don't want to save that you want to um there we go so that way we have two um i'm gonna rename it extra <laughs> just in case because i know accidents happen I d i've done it literally a million times um but once you're done with that um you know, you could you could have saved that, save as something else, and then not save that. Uh, but once you got like, I'll open up this Sundays. Once you have this, this is what I typically do. Instead of going back to that template, because you know sometimes our mix is kind of from scratch. It's good to already have a, a you know something that's already been mixed. So let's say like this Sunday we have four vocalists, an acoustic piano, and just tracks. We don't have any actual drums or anything like that. Um, what I would do is to, you know, come in and I'll say, okay, I'll set up the 25th for you. So what I'll do is I'll actually pull up, or pull up planning center and I'll go to the 25th. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at who is playing, right? So I have, let's see, I'm going to click on this H to show me on my channels. And you can only do the H over on this side, by the way. It can't do it on this mixer screen. Um, also, you can pull this up to only right here. This is like a little tidbit. Um, you can only make it that big. And you don't really need this back screen. You just need this once you really get going. But if you wanted, you could go to Window and you could click Open Mixer. And then you have a totally like full screen that you could use to mix or if you wanted to be crazy well that would actually be more difficult but <laughs> um you can have it pulled up if we had a second screen you could like have it pulled up kind of like how we had it before anyways that was a tidbit and random um i forgot where i was anyways i will try to go on because i cannot remember but um, once you get this selected and you're setting up for a Sunday, um, let's, oh, I said I was going to set up next Sunday. That's what it was. I appreciate y'all for dealing with my random, uh, forgetfulness. <laughs> Anyways, um, so I'm going to look and see who's playing. So I see the first thing I see is, yep, we got acoustic guitar. So we're good. Let's start at the top. Uh, we got acoustic guitar. Um, we have vocals. Um, we have four vocalists, so we need all those channels. We have media, we have acoustic, we don't have electric or any of this stuff. We should have bass. Um, bless me, sneeze, sorry. Um, we have piano. Um, we do have kick or uh, drums this time, so we're going to go ahead and... Um, and you can do the select click thing here too. Like you can select this channel and then, and then just do it all at once. You can do it like that, but either way um and then we just have tracks that's everything right so i would click off now we have everything we need i would come through and i would type in we have kim again um we have noel i like having them all caps so that way i can seem good and then we have me um we have stacy um i actually said this wrong this is this is noel this is Caroline. That's me. And that's Stacy. Um, so we have all that. That's all good. That's there and ready. Um, we have, if you notice, we have some of these red blinking R's, but we don't have all of them because we've added new channels. So I want to go through and make sure I got those. And we're pretty much set. You know, we can go off of this old mix. I can go here if I want to. I can type in Jake and we're ready to go and so what we can do is is we can click file save as and back up to five make sure this is in the desktop and not one of these it'll, sometimes it'll try to save it to um logic like a folder for logic um have it on desktop click save boom so i'm already ahead for next week so i can click out of this and look here we go now we have two right so i need this for this sunday but then this will be ready for next Sunday. So that's essentially 
uh, everything kind of going on on the computer for uh, broadcast and mixing. Um, in the future, maybe I can do some tips for how to mix. That's something that's kind of, you can do it some, but it's better to, to do it in person. Uh, but hopefully this has helped you. Hopefully it's been a good resource. And check make, make sure to check out the other videos of the diagram. Um, sorry this was so long. I didn't intend it to be so long. And sorry for all my ums and randomness. But um, this should help. I think it'll help learning how to set up things, how to troubleshoot a little bit, what could be going on on the computer. Um, the Dante Network is really special, uh, but really different. So, um, so yeah, just... If you have any questions, you can always ask. Um, if you have any thoughts um, or suggestions, you can also voice those as well. But I hope this helps, and I look forward to seeing how you'll grow to learn to use this resource.